How Saints celebrates those who have gone before us in the faith. Today we also celebrate new saints, those who will come before us to make a commitment to Christ as well as to the church. We begin with selected verses from the Psalms. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry of mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. And from Revelations we hear these words. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. Uh, and the angels stood around the throne and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of a great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated at the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, thirst no more, and the sun will strike them, not any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the waters of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for all the people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So I'm kind of a sucker for a good saint. And nobody really knows this, but when I started out in ministry, I had a stack of cards like this. They're saint prayer cards. Uh, have you ever seen these things? Anybody ever have? Yeah. Saint cards are like trading cards. Uh, but, you know, uh, they, they're cards for Catholic saints, but uh, they had a picture on the front, and they had stats on the back, you know, how to pray for these people and who to pray for. And I had a stack of these, but actually, when I was uh, starting out, I, I only had... Uh, the same saint. I had a whole stack of the same state, uh, saint because I, I really only resonated with this one saint, Saint Dimphna, and she's my favorite. Have you heard of Saint Dimphna? Anybody? <laughs> well, she's not exactly the most famous of saints, uh, but there you go. You know, according to tradition, she lived in the 7th century, and she was the daughter of a pagan Irish king and a Christian wife. And sadly, she was murdered by her father, which is another whole sermon in itself. But before she passed away, she is said to have built a hospice for the poor and sick of the region who were struggling with mental health concerns, and thus began the tradition of ongoing care for those living with mental illness that has endured for 500 years. St. Dimna is actually the patron saint of the nervous, or the patron saint of those who live with an emotional or mental health disorder, and patron saint of those with neurological disorders. 
That is to say, she really just seemed like my kind of saint. Uh, one who cared for those who don't always have it together. Uh, kind of like, uh, even herself, you know, kind of like me. Well, today is the day set aside in the church to remember the saints. But not just the ones who have training cards, since it's technically all saints Sunday and not just some saints Sunday. To be clear, this is not like a cult of saints or anything. Uh, we just don't need special saints to intercede for us because God listens to them more than, than they were just basically better Christians than we are. Uh, what we celebrate when we celebrate all saints is not the superhuman faith and power of a select few, uh, but it's God's ability to be involved in flawed people to do divine things. We celebrate all on whom God has acted in baptism, sealing them, as Ephesians says, with the mark of the promised Holy Spirit. We celebrate the fact that God creates faith in God's people, and, and those people, through ordinary acts of love, bring the kingdom of heaven closer to earth. We celebrate that we have in all gone before us what Paul calls such a great cloud of witnesses, and the faithful departed as much of the, as much of the body of Christ as we are. It is quite a thing, really, that we are connected to so many, connected to so much faith, isn't it? So many stories, so much divine love, especially in this day and age of alienation and trying to find community and belonging in smaller and smaller ways. I mean, I may think that the basis of me being connected to other people is in having theology or, or political beliefs or denominational affiliation or neighborhood or musical tastes or Facebook groups and in common, but none of that is what connects me to the body of Christ. What connects me to the body of Christ is not my piety, or my good works or theological beliefs. It's God. A God who gathers up all of God's children into church eternal. So today, let us remember all the deeply faithful and the deeply flawed saints of God's uh, church through whom the glory of God has been revealed and is being revealed and will be revealed. Let us remember Mary Magdalene and, and Peter the fishermen, and, and the glorious disciples. Let's remember St. Francis and, and Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King Jr. And let's remember Gail's mom and, and John's father and, and, and Jean and Annette, who, who actually took me in when I was just a couple of days away from being homeless. You know, today, let's thank God for gathering into to this church so many uh, and some of whom still light our paths today. As verse 4 of our hymn says, O blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, but they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia. Alleluia. You know, many of you have come here today to honor someone that you've loved who has passed away. Your hearts are heavy with the loss of someone dear. Many of us have our own beloved dead to, to remember this day, but people who, frankly, we'd rather still have here in our, in our midst, in this room, as a living person and not just a photo on a table. You know, we'd rather be standing behind them in line for communion, rather than adding them uh, to a litany of our saints. You know, several years ago, a friend of mine lost her, her son Jason to suicide. Jason was 17 years old. He was an animated young man who was very different from other boys. He was uh, on the state championship cheerleading squad. He loved weaving. He loved making and crocheting scarves. And, for his friends, and, and for all of this, he was bullied mercilessly. 
Alex, a baptized, beloved, beautiful child of God, is gone. But here today, I will speak his name. I will include his name with the names of others who are from our congregation and who have departed this world since uh, the last All Saints Day, both expectedly and unexpectedly. And all of them now taken into the embrace of the God from whom they came in the first place. You know, when I spoke to my friend a few weeks ago, she spoke of how much she's still understandably struggling to make sense of Jason's death. And I told her, as I have told so many others, that I don't have any easy answers. And there's seldom an answer to the question of why there is such senseless suffering. But there is meaning to be found in it. And for me, that meaning is connected to being a part of the body of Christ because it means that death never has the final word. Because in both life and death, like Jason, we are much connected to God and to one another. In the letter to the Ephesians, uh, we hear it referred to as this, the inheritance of the saints. That God somehow gathers us all up into the divine love of Christ and makes us a body both now and in the life to come. That even those whose names are eventually forgotten are always and forever held in the light of God in glory. Because while death is a wrenching, painful reality to us, it's meaningless to God. Not that God is impervious to pain or death, mind you. After all, Jesus had real friends who died. He stood outside the tomb of Lazarus and wept. And, and then, of course, he raised Lazarus from the, from the grave as though before Jesus was going to defeat death for good, he needed to just give it a really good shake up first. You know, God in Jesus was so moved by compassion and love for those other people rejected, those like young Jason, that his hand was ever extended to them. A God who in Jesus was so full of grace that he went to a cross we built for him. A God who in Jesus descended to the dead as though to say to us, even here I will find you and not let you go. Because death has no sting. Death is rendered meaningless to a God of resurrection. And lest we forget, it's a God of resurrection who we worship. You know, in that conversation with my friend Bev, I had said I didn't have any answers. Um, but I did know that today was All Saints Sunday and that we could remember Jason. Yet one more saint that has gone before us with whom we are inextricably united in the body of Christ. So what can we do but also give thanks for this table that we are about to gather around, folks, a foretaste of the heavenly banquet around which the saints are already gathered. We give thanks around this table that we are tied to the whole communion of saints and united with uh, with all who have ever received bread and wine and told it was Jesus. And it was for him. And it was for them. We are joined here with our archangels and our angels and our cherubim and seraphim. We are joined with the church on earth and the church in heaven and all who have called upon the name of God. And we are connected to God. <laughs> So for this, we are also giving thanks that saintly acts are always just really simple acts of love. And that we give thanks for all those who have come before us, handing us the faith, and being used by God for simple acts of love. Building porches in the community. Washing each other's feet. Giving food to those who hunger. Taking in a kid that's trying to, to get sober. Ch changing a child's diaper. Making a quilt for someone in need. Oh, blessed communion. Fellowship divine. We feebly struggle. But they in glory shine. 
Yet all are one in thee, for all 